Hi, we are going to be talking about chapter 19 this morning. It's concerning electric potential and electric energy. So when we talk about electric energy, we think of it in terms of uh, energy associated with some sort of reference point. Just like in the first part of physics, we had potential energy associated with moving above a certain level. We have uh, a reference point and we move according to that. So when we are looking at this, we think about places in our electric field. Um, the electric field lines we know go from positive to negative. And if we look at this particular diagram, the closer you are to the positive electrodes, the higher your electric potential is. So in this diagram, point A has at a high electric potential and point B is at a lower electric potential. If we move down a little bit, can, well, let's see, get my screen to roll up. So if we look at this, we can see that the electric potential is defined as the potential energy per unit charge, or another way to think of this is the work done in carrying a unit positive test charge from one place in an electric field to a different place in the electric field. Uh, it is not a vector, but we do sometimes use positive and negative signs in order to indicate the sign of the charge that was used. So when we look at our equation, the electric potential is um, measured with respect to a reference point, just like potential energy was measured with respect to a reference point. Usually we measure it with respect to electric ground. Um, and so we don't really talk about the potential as much as we talk about the potential difference. So when we're working it all out, the electric potential is, again, the work done in moving the charge, and it ends up equaling the electric field times the separation, times the distance that you've been moved, uh, although we'll come up with a, a version that's maybe a little bit more user-friendly for us. Um, we symbolize it by the letter capital V, so the electric potential, sometimes people call it the voltage. We call it the voltage. Regardless of whether you call it the electric potential or the voltage, it is measured in volts. And a volt is defined as a joule divided by a coulomb. And you can see we get that from this part of the equation. Work is always in joules and Q is in coulombs. Now, for practice problems with this, you can certainly see things in the study guide. You should have a list of those questions. Let's look at some numeric examples. So in our first numeric example, we want to know how much work is needed to move a positive six microcoulomb. Remember this Greek letter that looks like a U with a long descending tail in the front is the Greek letter mu and it stands for 10 to the minus six. So plus six microcoulombs will be the size of our charge, and we're gonna go from zero volts, which is ground, to a potential of 15 volts. And we wanna know what's the work done. So as always, we summarize our information. We write down what we know, what we're trying to find, and then the formulas that will help us. So our ch charge is plus six microcoulombs, but right away we want to take that mu and turn it into the appropriate power of 10. So this will be plus six times 10 to the minus six coulombs. We know that our initial voltage is zero volts. We know that our final voltage is 15 volts, and we're looking for the work done. That's capital W. And so we have an equation that relates charge and voltage to work. So we know that delta V is equal to W divided by Q. That's our formula we'll need to write down. And so now we start with that. We write the, just because we list it in the formulas, we need to list it when we start our calculations. So delta V is equal to W over Q. 
Well, delta V would be V final minus V initial, so 15 volts minus zero volts, equals W we don't know, but we'd like to, and Q was just that six times 10 to the minus six coulombs. So if we come down from there and do our math, we can say that 15 minus zero is just 15. To get the six times 10 to the minus six coulombs out of the denominator, you have to multiply both sides by it. So 15 volts multiplied by six times 10 to the minus six coulombs will give us W. And then when we do our arithmetic, 15 times six times 10 to the minus six gives us nine times 10 to the minus five joules. Work is measured in joules. A volt multiplied by a coulomb gives us a joule. All right, example number two. What force does it take to move? Whoops, I'm sorry, I overshot. I seem to do that when I don't have a, uh, a mouse handy. What force does it take to move a plus four Coulomb charge from a position where the voltage or the potential is five volts to one where it is 25 volts if we know those two locations are 30 centimeters apart? So as always, we break it up into what we know, what we're trying to find, and the formulas we have. So Q is plus four Coulombs. The initial potential is five volts. The final potential is 25 volts. And the separation distance is 30 centimeters. But we know we've got to convert centimeters to meters. So this is 0 0.3 meters. We're trying to find the force. So F is what we're trying to solve for. We know that delta V is equal to W over Q. But that's not going to help us unless we know something about the force because we're asked to solve for the force. Well, we know from last semester that work is equal to force times distance. So we have two equations. We could make it a two-part problem or we could just use some simple substitution. So we will start by writing down, we'll pick the formula we know the most. We've got the the two V's and the Q, we can use that to find the W. So if we've got delta V is equal to W over Q, so delta V would equal, but W, the work, is force times distance. So now we've got an equation where we know everything except F. We've got that V final was 25 volts, V initial was 5 volts, we don't know F. The distance was 0 0.3 meters, and Q is 4 coulombs. And so when you do the arithmetic, 25 minus 5 is 20 volts. Multiply both sides by 4 coulombs. You'll get 4 times 20 will give you 80 uh, volt coulombs. Divide both sides by 0.3 meters. And you have that 80 volt coulombs divided by 0 0.3 meters gives you 266.67 newtons. And that is the force. All right. Let's talk about equipotential lines. Remember, potential is another name for the electric potential. So elect equipotential lines We'll pull it up just a little bit so we can see. And I did it again. So equipotential lines are lines that are perpendicular to the electric field lines. We'll draw these in lab. We've got a meter and uh, uh, a parallel plate configuration. And we'll actually measure the equipotentials and use those to draw the electric field lines. So an equipotential line is a line where the electric potential is the same all along the line. In this drawing, it's the red dash lines. So this one would be the 30 volt equipotential. This would be the 20 volt equipotential. This would be the 10 volt equipotential. The solid blue lines represent the electric field lines. So electric field lines and equipotential lines are 90 degrees to each other. If you move along an equipotential, so if we started up here at the top at the 10 volt equipotential line, and then we moved all the way straight down to the bottom of it, we wouldn't do any work in moving that distance because the delta V, the change in electric potential would be zero. 
So the, if the potential is the same, you don't do any work. Now, if we jump from the 10 volt to the 20 volt, that takes work. Or from the 10 volt to the 30 volt, that would take work. But if you stay on the 30 volt line, no work is done. If you stay on the 20 volt line, no work is done. And again, the closer you are to the positive electrodes, the higher the voltage, the closer you are to the negative, the lower the voltage. And again, we'll see this in lab. We'll be able to measure our voltages. So as we've said, the electric field lines are solid lines. We draw them as solid lines that have arrows on them. They go from positive to negative. The equipotential lines are drawn in as dashed lines. They're always at 90 degrees to the solid electric field lines. If instead of two parallel plates, we had two point charges, a positive and a negative, the electric field lines would go from positive to negative, so one would go straight across, another might curve up and away like this, or down and away like that. And the equipotential lines then make these funny little shapes, again, that have to always be at 90 degrees to the electric field lines. Uh, here are some more drawings from another source, uh, a little nicer than mine. So again, we had a positive on the left and the negative on the right. Here we've had them switch places, but electric field lines go from positive to negative. So it looks like this top drawing, except the arrows are pointing the opposite direction. So the solid blue lines represent the electric field lines and the dashed lines represent the equipotential lines. So along any equipotential line, the voltage would be the same. If you've got like charges, here two positives, they repel each other so the electric field lines would get close and then veer away from each other. And again, these dash lines represent the equipotential lines. All right. So what's an electron volt? An electron volt is the energy acquired by an electron when it moves through a potential difference of one volt. We symbolize it by little e, big V. So one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. In physics, oftentimes an electron volt is too small and we need more energy than that. So we talk about MEVs. One MEV is 1 million electron volts, the so 1.6 times 10 to the minus 13 joules. All right, so electric potential and potential energy due to point charges. If we look at this, the electric potential, remember that's another name for the voltage, at some distance R from a single point charge can be given by this equation where V would equal K times Q over R. So the closer you are to the charge, the smaller R would be, the bigger your potential. The farther away you get from it, the smaller it's going to be. Little k is this constant, 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. And Q is the magnitude of your charge in coulombs. You can put a minus sign on it if it's due to a negative charge, a plus sign if it's due to a positive charge. We don't think of uh, these potentials or voltages. They're not vectors per se, but we do use the plus and the minus to indicate the type charge. All right. So because they're not vectors, we can use the simple algebraic sum to find your total potential. So let's look at this. We want to know the minimum amount of work required to bring a point charge of plus 5 times 10 to the uh, microcoulomb, I'm sorry. Yes, plus 5 microcoulombs from infinity, so from as far away as you can get, to a point 1 meter from a plus 50 microcoulomb charge. How do we do this? 
Well, we set up what we know, what we're trying to find in our formulas. We know <clears throat> that our uh, charge that we're moving, the little charge, is plus five microcoulombs, so plus five times 10 to the minus six coulombs. We know our fixed larger charge is 50 microcoulombs, so in this case, plus 50 times 10 to the minus six coulombs. We're trying to find the work done, and we have that our change in potential is equal to work over charge, and we also know that potential is K times Q over R. Oh, I'm sorry, I also forgot to mention our two distances. We know that the initial distance is at infinity, so as big a number as you can get and then some, and our final distance is one meter. So how do we proceed? Well, we know that delta V is equal to W over Q. Delta V is W over Q. And delta B, V would be V final minus V initial. But we know that voltage is KQ over R. So you could do it as a single equation like this, or you could break it up into parts. At this point, you could stop and say, OK, I need to find V final and use this equation and just find V final and then plug that in and find V initial and plug that in. Or you can take the equation and do a substitution. It is up to you. So I've chosen to do it as one calculation, but you can break it down into parts. So V is equal to KQ over R. So KQ over R final is minus KQ over R initial will equal W over Q. Now the nice thing about this is it's not going to really matter where you put your Qs. Do you use your... Um, Take that back. We'll keep our work done. Oh, I see it does. All right, my apologies. So we need to keep the, the Q that's moving on the right side with the W over Q. And the change in potential will be on the left side with the larger fixed Q. So we plug in our numbers. Little k is nine times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. Q was 50 times 10 to the minus six coulombs, and R final is one meter. To do V initial, we need nine times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared per coulomb squared times 50 times 10 to the minus six coulombs divided by infinity, and that's going to equal W divided by five times 10 to the minus six coulombs. So nine times 10 to the ninth multiplied by 50 times 10 to the minus six divided by one will give us 4.5 times 10 to the fifth, and the units would be newtons, meters per coulomb. Minus zero, well, how do I know that's a zero? Well, when you take any number, that would be our numerator, and divide it by a big, huge number, you're gonna get zero. So, and then it'll be minus W over five times 10 to the minus six coulombs. So when we do our arithmetic, we have to multiply both sides by five times 10 to the minus six coulombs to get it out of the denominator. And that means that W is gonna equal 2.25 joules. And like I said, there are a lot of different ways you could have approached this. You could have done it as three separate calculations instead of the one larger one. And that would have been just fine. So in the book, they show us that if you have a positive charge, if we plotted our potential versus separation distance, the closer you are, so the smaller R is, the bigger your potential. And as you get farther and farther away, the smaller it's going to get until it approaches zero. If you have a negative charge, it has a large negative value when you're close to it, and as you get, again, farther and farther away, it's going to go to zero. So if we've got a collection of charges, you just take the algebraic sum. Let's do an example. So we wanna know the electric potential at point A because of charges one and two. And at first, this looks daunting. We've got a triangular shape out of all of this. We know the two charges. 
but because they're asking for the potential, it's really very easy. So Q1 is plus five microcoulombs. So five times 10 to the minus six coulombs. R1 is the distance between Q1 and the point in question, so A. So our number there would be 0 0.3 meters. Q2 would be minus five microcoulombs, so minus five times 10 to the minus six coulombs. And R2 is this separation distance, 0 0.5 meters. We don't need to know the distance between one and two, it's just extra information. And they want us to find V total, the total potential. So we know that V is equal to KQ over R and that the voltages add, the potentials add. So we can find the individual potentials and then add them together. So the first thing we wanna do is find V1 and V2. So V1 is KQ1 over R1. So nine times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared times five times 10 to the minus six Coulombs divided by 0.3. When you do the math, you get 1.5 times 10 to the fifth volts. Let's do the same thing for the second charge. So V2 is equal to K Q2 over R squared. So nine times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared times five times 10 to the minus six coulombs divided by 0.5 and we've got a negative nine times 10 to the fourth volts because this was a negative charge. And then finally to find the total, to find the total, we just go through and add the voltages up. So we have V1 plus V2, so 1.5 times 10 to the fifth volts minus nine times 10 to the fourth volts to give us six times 10 to the fourth volts. All right, so for homework, you want to practice. And there are some problems on the study guide. So we have two problems, one with three charges at three different distances from a point in space. And here's our answer. And the answer for the second one, we know we want to know the minimum amount of work required to bring a plus 10 microcoulomb charge from 30 meters away to one meter away from our large 100 microcoulomb charge. And that gets us to capacitance. I think we'll stop our first video here. And whoops, yes.